The Cabin Leitrim Railway is a three foot narrow gauge heritage railway based at Drummond, County Leitrim. It preserves part of the original Cavan Leitrim Railway that operated from 1887 to 1959. In this talk we will highlight some of the ongoing projects that are currently taking place and showing you how we preserve Irish Railway heritage. Like many other groups we depend on our volunteers and supporters to keep the railway operational and at the minute we have a major track work project to get our track up to operational standards which is ongoing. We also need to maintain our locomotives and rolling stock on an ongoing basis too. We have a couple of locomotives we use for permanent way with but all export pneumonia, Rustons. One's a big 48DL and the other's a 40DL. And the 40DL came from Ballacorrick and Mayo and uh, the 48 the came from Bora, uh, which is down in the Midlands, down in Napoli. And uh, we got them as wrecks and we restored them, so we're using them today. And Joe said Ledger was a friend of ours who uh, went all over Ireland with his collecting the, the original bits of the narrow gauge in the 1970s, 1980s and 1990s and uh, he was from Cork and he had photographed trains all over Ireland and he died about over 10 years ago and we named the engine the 114 after him then, Joseph Ledger. Yeah there's another board and engine in the engine shed and it's used to push out the steam engine in the morning and originally they, they had to steam the engine inside the shed and then steam her out when she was ready but it's better off to steam her outside than in the shed because you have smoke and everything else and uh, we push it outside over the inspection pit or the ash pit. The railway has a number of ex board pneumonia diesel locomotives and recently one of our volunteers, Philip, has started a conservation programme of restoring some of these diesel locomotives to static display. The first of these is LM369 which is known as a Gleismach locomotive and it was built by Dundalk Engineering under licence. It was part of a number built in the mid-1980s for Board Nimona. They were not a particularly successful design and were generally relegated to lighter duties. The second loco shown is LM106, which is a Ruston of 1954. You'll note that the delivery of both of these locos is known as Texas Yellow and this denotes that these locomotives were generally confined to non-peat working. So this would have included fuel trains, water trains and permanent way workings. Lastly, we have another Ruston. This is LM161 and it's cur currently undergoing restoration uh, to operational condition as one of our permanent way locomotives. The engine has been removed and is currently being restored by one of our volunteers. 47C has also undergone some external restoration. So 47C was a rail car trailer based on the West Clare section of CIE and it worked with the then new Walker rail cars. The trailer itself was built on a former Trillian Dingle railway carriage chassis from 6T, which was built in 1890. And it is largely still original. Uh, the carriage was given a pseudo Great Southern Railway Crimson I've collected the bits of four Trillian Dingle coaches over the year, over the years. Two from Board Nimona and two from Callan and County Kilkenny. The two in Callan and County Kilkenny were in a, in a builder's yard, and he was a land reclamation uh, contractor in the 1940s. And in the 1950s, the, the carriages were sold off from Ennis. So he jacked them up and put iron rims under the, under the carriages or iron wheels and pulled them home behind his tractor. And I happened to give his daughters a lift one day going to, from Dungarvan to Limerick. And I started talking trains to them and they said they've got trams in the back garden. So I checked it out and I found a Dublin tram, a Wolverhampton trolley bus and two Trillian Dingle coaches and a whole heap of other 
two foot gauge stuff. So for, between Barter and one of the other, one thing and the other, I got the carriages off them, and they're still here in Drummond to this day. So it was about time we started to restore them, and uh, a few of us got together, and uh, we have the uh, chassis and bogies and all the bits and pieces of the carriage put onto a, a, a lorry last November, and uh, before Brexit came in and off to Cumbria with them, but we had the pandemic here started at the time. But we still got it out and away. And uh, Alex, they're in Alex Sharp House's company called John Fowler and Company. And he has the bogies taken apart. He has, uh, we have three bogies and we need a fourth one for a second carriage, two in each carriage. And he's rebuilding a fourth bogie that when we ever go to restore our second trolley in Dingle Coach, we have wheels and brakes and everything for it. And in the bottom shed was the third bogie which was I we found in Bordemona many years ago inside two LMS NCC wagons. And that was down in the workshop for the last 20 years. And the other night we pulled it out. So all three bogies are together for the first time in years and years and years. Bogey is a bogey coach has two has two bogies. A six wheel coach has six wheels and they're kind of solid underneath the, the, the carriage. But um, the uh, the bogey coach will go around corners better and it's easier riding. While a four wheel coach or a six wheel coach is not as smooth as a bogey coach. And you can fit more people in a bogey coach than you can in a four wheel coach. When the original uh, when the Trillian Dingle lying close to passengers in 39 the stock was split between the west clare section of the gsr and the cabin leitrim section of the gsr and some of them came here to drum it and the ones i found were, were came from clare from ennis and uh but they still the trillion dingle carriages still ran here so it'll be recreating the past because uh, it's very hard to, to once things are gone to bring them back well the trillion dingle carriage is got a steel chassis on the top of it's made of wood. This carriage is all steel, and uh, it's um, what you have is in either end. While the car the Trillian Dingle carriages were solid, the uh, solid ends, and you got into the carriage through the door. This one you get onto the veranda and then into the carriage, which is different. Well, it it just looks the period. They were built in the eighteen nineties, so uh, in Bristol, and uh, this this one had been all over Ireland on the two few. Uh, we, They've been to uh, Tralee, they've been to Clare, they've been to Callan, and I've had them in from Cal from Care. I brought them from Callan to Care, and from Care to here, C Care in County Tipperary, and uh, that's over thirty years ago. So uh, it's something else to see the th same thing come back again, and we've sent over uh, our first steam engine, which is called Drumad, and it's a Kerr Stewart from nineteen sixteen. And it worked here for 10 years, from 1994 to 2004. And uh, after that, you have to do a lot of work to the boiler. So the first thing when he got when he got uh, to, to Cumbria was to take the boiler off and uh, investigate what was, what needed done to the boiler. So the boiler, the um, fire, inner firebox is burned out. So it has been taken out and a new firebox made. So the next job is to put back in this firebox in the boiler and get it all ready for, for it to go back into the into the engine. And we, we, we're two thirds of the way through to that job. The wheels have to be looked at in the axle boxes and all just generally all over just looked at. 
and, and inspected and, and made sure she's right. She's the only Kerr Stewart in Ireland, in fact, and uh, the uh, we have Nancy and we have Drummond, and if you have one, two engines, if one breaks down, you always have another one. And uh, we'll be the only railway in Ireland, a narrow gauge railway with two steam engines in the whole of the Republic of Ireland. Now we have uh, a man in Cumbria called Alex Sharphouse and he has a company that restores steam engines and, and carriages and all the rest of it. What we do here is we are an engineering company which took over the brand name of John Fowler & Co Leeds Limited um, which is one of the most uh, important and outstanding traction engine manufacturers and also locomotive and many other machines. Um, so we've continued the business going here mainly restoring um, and building steam components, engines, locomotives um, but we do other engineering work as well for some of the local quarries and bits and pieces like that um, but uh, we, we fairly what keep, keep busy with the boiler side and steam restoration so we've been here for 15 years uh, and the kind of size of what we've done has grown and grown to uh, where we're at today which is you know relatively busy really so this is Drummond's boiler um, it came to us um, for basically a full overhaul um, it's not in too bad a condition we've had a lot worse um, as you can see behind it's got a big piece missing here so in the bottom of the barrel at the rear section was quite wasted so we've cut that out and are making a, um, a deep patch to go in there which you can see the new the new plate work to the side of us here so that's going to be the the patch to go in it um, and this is the piece that we've taken out um, the inner firebox is out of the boiler now um, and we've made the new box and it's more or less ready to turn upside down lower the new box into it and start marking up for the stay holes and fitting the foundation ring so we're probably 50 percent there with the time scale on and what we're doing. Um, so here we have um, a bogey construction um, copying the old ones we had um, three bogies come to us so we've made a fourth one to make up the set um, we've copied the existing um, bogies we had so it's a direct copy apart from we've got at the moment the original set of wheels as you can see it's all traditionally riveted um, on all the um, main steel work of it and um, we're now waiting for the leaf springs to be made, we're having new, new springs for this one um, and then we can start to put it all together and stand on its, um, its own springs. Um, so we tend to use, if we can, hydraulic squeezers, we find that the results are much better, you get a lot tidier rivet um, and you're certainly guaranteed that you've closed the rivet which is basically squashed it tightly shut. Um, other advantages are noise, um, we live in quite a quiet place in Cumbria so if we were using air hammers all the time you'd find it quite you know quite noisy so um, that's, how, that's how we do most of our riveting if we can. So we've got the other three bogies are all under restoration at the moment um, in various stages that you'll see as you walk round. Um, we've had to replace quite a bit of steel work in two of the bogies due to corrosion and uh, badly bending. Um, when we get all four bogies to a finished state we'll then shot blast all the um, material. When you've got new steel work like in here you get the mill, what they call the mill scale which is like the blue black on it. Um, that doesn't take paint very well it always falls off afterwards in a, in a year or two's time so you lose your paint so if we shot blast it all it will remove all that and give the, the new coat of paint a good key and um, hopefully preserve it for many years to come. Well, we're refurbishing the track since last year. We started in the station and now we're out two thirds of the way. And we put all in new second hand sleepers. The engine Nancy will not run on the old track that's there. It's just gone too bad after 25 years. And we use the old system of dog spikes which hold the rail into the sleepers, which is um, the old way, the original way. But uh, we have to go for a more modern way to hold the tra track better. So we're taking all the old dog spikes out and replacing them all with track screws and clips. 
the screws go through the clips and secure the rails to the sleepers because they're m more secure fixing uh, than the dog spikes. The track at the end of the line is overgrown completely. So what we've got to do is use the strimmer on it first and cut down the grass. And then the grass is growing on top of the stone. And then we knock out the rails. And then we use the ballast fork to rake the, the, the grass and the weeds out of the stone. And then when we've got that done, we lift out the rotten sleepers. And uh, we, we have to dig out the sleepers then where they've dug out to put in new ones and level them and put back the track. And then um, re-screw the sleepers through the drill, the auger, and then uh, use the torque wrench to screw in the bolts. And it takes about two or three of us at least to work at this. We're out of bolts at the minute. We're at, we used our last bolts yesterday. So we have two thirds of the line done. That will allow us to replace uh, any rails uh, that we deem to need replacing on the main running line and it will also allow us to uh, construct a passing loop um, at Dromod station end and also out at the end of the line at Clune Colliery. And we need a run around loops for the steam engine. When it comes off, the train comes into the station, you're able to take it off and run around the train and back the stage, train back into the station and take your passenger load. And when you go to the other end, you do the same. You run around the train and back in again. It means the driver is always at the front of the train, or the engine is always at the front of the train. Thank you very much for listening and I hope that you enjoyed the presentation. If We're always looking for support, so if anyone wants to get in touch, feel free to find us on Facebook, Cavan and Leitrim Railway. Thanks. <laughs>